Okay, well, welcome everybody. My name is Amy Verdun. I'm a professor of political science, but we call me European Governance here at Leiden University in the Institute of Political Science. And I'm really delighted that Maxine invited me to be here for your chair for this first panel. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't here this morning for the keynote, uh, but I hear it was uh, very exciting. Um, we have here two of the three papers announced. We might get the third one, but we're not yet exactly sure. So we're going to go ahead on the assumption that we start with the first two presenters who are here with us right now. Uh, so we'll go in the order of the program. Or is that okay with you? Or would you prefer to go first? Uh, what would you prefer? Yeah, okay, so we'll go with the, the third list of paper first. Mm -hmm. So, Bahar uh, is seen the news, but Sofienza University is giving a paper on the assessment of the migration crisis from Syria to Turkey and the European Union. And with, I've asked the presenters to stick to about 15 minutes, and so we'll have plenty okay. of question and answer time. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be in the Netherlands again, and it's the first time. Uh, as being in Leiden. Uh, my uh, presentation is on the migration crisis from Syria to Turkey and challenges on EU-Turkey legal relationship. In this framework, uh, I, pre I prepared a paper with this uh, introduction, general remarks about text on Turkey, implications in terms of international law, analysis of relevant Turkish national law provisions, effects on the EU, and assessments on EU-Turkey relationship at the end. And I will be uh, sticking up to my time limit of about 15 minutes. And uh, if there are any questions relevant to the topic, of course, I'm here. Uh, pleasure to address uh, those questions. Firstly, I would like to say a few words as introduction. Uh, Turkey as a country, a candidate to join the Union, European Union, is hosting uh, over three and a half uh, and I should say three and <laughs> six uh, million people. And uh, this is according to the uh, relevant statistics of the European Commission. So I always uh, refer to the relevant websites if uh, there is any reference uh, so that uh, anyone that would like to have further information can consult these pages. So uh, you see that it's a really devastating <laughs> number. Three and more than three and a half million people are uh, coming to Turkey from Syria. Uh, there is uh, the issue of the security with Syria because uh, the border with Syria is 911 kilometers and it is the longest border of Turkey with any other country. So, uh, I just wanted to uh, start with these two really remarkable uh, numbers uh, so that I could uh, just elaborate on the uh, effects of this migration from Syria to the security and uh, also uh, the uh, economic and soci sociological uh, effects on Turkey. Uh, in terms of EU, uh, yes, Turkey is a candidate to join the European <laughs> Union. Uh, and in terms of European Union, uh, this policy, the Syria policy, is held uh, in terms of the EU external relations policy framework. And uh, between Turkey, there is the association and accession process with Turkey. Uh, the legal framework with Turkey has started in 1960s with Ankara Agreement. It is the association agreement between EU and Turkey. And then now the process is going on with the accession talks. About general remarks on the effects of Turkey, I have found in this research some statistics from the Republic of Turkey Ministry of Interior Directorate General of Migration Management. And uh, these statistics, especially these ones, distributions in scope of temporary protection by year, they really uh, underlines, as you see, the vast amount of number of uh, people coming from Syria. And they are under tem temporary protection in Turkey. As you see uh, on the slide, uh, the number is increasing uh, really much more <laughs> as the years go by. And uh, it started in 2012, then uh, reached to this year as uh, 3 million, 3.5 million, more than 3.5 million people. Uh, in terms of general remarks about Turkey, there are some misunderstandings in terms of the concepts. Although I 
I'm not an expert of migration, and my specific focus at Sapienza University of Rome is a PhD student is the rights of the disabled. <coughs> I just would like to underline the importance of uh, using the right terminology as a jurist. A legal perspective is migration is one issue, asylum is another one, and there are other, for example, temporary protection, or these kinds of I mean, asylum uh, and uh, immigration kinds of uh, terms used in this uh, framework, but of course they should be used in uh, the right legal terminology. Um, Irregular migration is the issue that we are mainly focusing on in terms of Turkey. About economic aspect, um, it is always a discussion in Turkey nowadays that there is a financial burden of the people coming from Syria. There is uh, the unemployment problem in general terms in Turkey, especially beyond our uh, youth generation. And when people come from Syria, <laughs> they are employed by uh, work, uh, by the employees, actually by the employers, then there may be some uh, conflicts <laughs> between Turkish people and uh, Syrian people in that regard, of course. Uh, apart from that, in sociological terms, of course, they are um, of different culture, although there are similarities, so uh, maybe uh, together, maybe sometimes, uh, may, may lead to sometimes problematic issues. Um, about the international law, um, the UN uh, has issued many, uh, as the Security Council uh, in the UN issued many uh, resolutions in terms of the, uh, in terms of uh, encouraging Turkey's efforts in that uh, ambit and uh, appreciated Turkey's efforts and uh, it all, they are always uh, in that kind of resolutions in terms of the EU and what um, the veto power within the, e, within the UN Security Council has al always been a handicap to reach a general, <coughs> a general conclusion, a general decision in terms of, uh, in terms of applying uh, some measures about uh, implications of international law, in international human rights law, uh, the principle of non reform ensures that nobody should be returned to a country where they would face torture, cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment, and other irre irreparable harm. In that context, of course, this uh, is valid uh, and it's an important um, principle in terms of international law. When we look at Turkish national law provisions, um, the Act on Foreigners and International Protection of uh, uh, International Protection of Turkish National Law is important to cite. Uh, so um, this is a recently uh, newly adopted Act, and in this Act there are important provisions to reflect to you. For example, the migration. The migration term according to this act, includes illegal in entrance, stay of foreigners, and their departure from Turkey, and irregular migration. Um, and again, according to this act, regular migration is defined as entrance of foreigners legally to Turkey, their stay in Turkey, and departure from Turkey. But with regard to the Syri com people coming from Syria, we uh, refer to irregular migration in uh, general terms because it is defined as entrance of foreigners illegally to Turkey, their stay in Turkey, departure from Turkey, and illegal working in Turkey. Um, apart from that, uh, there is this international protection uh, term is used, and it is defined as the status of refugee, conditional refugee, or secondary protection. And uh, there is the readmission agreement, which is uh, important to cite, especially in terms of EU uh, Turkey relations, and it is defined as the agreement which is included to send irregular migrants from one state to another in scope of the rules and procedures in the agreement, because there is an agreement, readmission agreement signed between Turkey and uh, the European Union, and it uh, needs also some reflections. Um, a refugee uh, is also uh, an important, of course, term when talking on migration issues. It's described as persons not benefiting 
effectively from international protection of his or state of nationality because of being a member uh, to a group. Uh, the uh, important uh, uh, term that I used at the beginning was the temporary protection, as I have highlighted. And it is uh, just defined as the judicial protection afforded to the ones coming to the country by illicit law. So, um, in terms of legal terminology, there are different terms, as you see. And Turkey's party uh, to the 1951 General Convention relating to the status of refugees. And uh, there's an important point here because uh, Turkey has this geographical limitation. And with this limitation, also Turkey is part of the uh, 1967 protocol relating to the status of refugees as well. Uh, this geographical limitation means something. According to this reservation, Turkey may only give refugee status to the ones coming from Europe. Turkey is not under an obligation to give refugees to the ones like people coming from Syria. So, this is an important legal point to make, and uh, they are all in terms of, as you see, uh, temporary protection, the numbers as you have seen. The EU deals with the crisis in Syria as part of the external action. Also, there is uh, the uh, treaty for, for functioning of the EU uh, provision on that. So the EU is to act with the perspective of a free and appropriate status to any person from a third country national requiring international protection, protection pursuant uh, to the principle of non refoulement and all the EU parties, of, or, or of course, as you know, uh, parties to the Geneva Convention. Uh, there is important provisions of the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights in uh, terms of uh, the subject. And it is about asylum. Another one is uh, again on Article 19. Collective expulsions are prohibited in that uh, context. And uh, the non deployment principle there. There is one regulation of 2030. And um, apart from that, there is a directive uh, called Return Directive within the framework of EU law. And just a few words on EU-Turkey uh, relationship. I would like to refer back to 1963 Ankara Agreement, which sets an association relationship between Turkey and the European Union. It is so important, the uh, milestone of all the relationship between the EU and Turkey. And uh, there is, uh, apart from that, the application of Turkey to full membership to the European Union in 1987. And in 1999, Turkey has been uh, announced as a candidate to uh, join the European Union. Uh, in that context, uh, the uh, negotiations have uh, started. Have started in 2005, and um, in this relationship, it is important just to elaborate uh, just a few words on readmission agreements versus visa liberalisation policy because they are put on the same basket. If I can. It that way, but they are so uh, different from <laughs> each other. And if there are any questions on that, I'll refer back to it. And um, finally, I would like to just mark the important article of 28 of Ankara Agreement. This is uh, between the now EU, because it was EEC those times, and Turkey. As soon as the operation of this agreement has advanced far enough to justify envisaging full acceptance by Turkey of the obligations arising from the, from the treaty, establishing the community, the contracting parties shall examine the possibility of the accession of Turkey to the community. So this is uh, the explicit provision in a uh, 1963 agreement and <coughs> is part of the customs union since 1996. Uh, and uh, for just a final remark, there are uh, important uh, legal documents within this relationship and in 2019 progress report also refers to uh, the uh, migration issue uh, as well. And these are the conclusive remarks of mine. Thank you for your uh, time and kind attention. Thank you.
uh, I'm going to turn now to Julien Ye from the Free University of Brussels, uh, whose paper is Against Migration Smuggling and Human Trafficking, Raising Awareness of the Risks of Smuggling and Irregular Migration in Europe and the Global South. Floor is yours. Thank you. Um, why I care about the um, why I care about the migrant, mi migrant smuggling and human trafficking, um, as our keynote speaker mentioned, when you do your research topic, you need to care about who you want to help with. I think I care about the victim of the human trafficking and migrant migrant smuggling. A lot of tragic story happen around the world, even now here around us. Uh, I give you one example. A few months ago, in October 23, um, the body of 39 victims are Vietnamese national uh, was found dead in the trailers of a refrigerator lorry in the United Kingdom. All, 30, all 39 people were dead. And they were thought to have been smuggling either as migrants or in human trafficking. And one of the girls, just 26 years old, her name is uh, Pong, Pong T. Chan Mai. She, before her die, she sent a message to her parents and she wrote, I'm sorry, Dad and Mom, the way I went overseas was not successful. Mom, I love Dad and you. I, I'm dying because I can't read. Um, I'm so sorry, Mom. This is the, the story of those victims. That's why I care about, about them. So, um, so we, I want to have an overlook about the migration um, around the world and why those migrant, migrant smuggling and human trafficking increase in, in the world. And where, where all those victims come from, where is their destination, and what those these victims be used for, and what we can do to help them and change this situation. So, as we know, the EU is one of the major destinations for migrants from global South country. And in 2009, Euro hosts around 82 migrations, international migrations. The current global, uh, global is estimated in 2009 was around 272 million international migrants in the world, which is around 3.5 uh, populations. Mm. One of the reasons that the international migrants and refugee increase is that more and more air, they have work complete and violence. In the end of 2018, the total global stock of people internally displayed by conflict and violence was, was 41.3 million. It was the highest, highest record since 1998. The world's top 20 countries with the highest numbers of internally displays due to conflict and violence. In the end, most of those countries were either in the Middle East or Sub Saharan Africa. The Shilia, as Baha mentioned, the Shilia Arabic Republic had the highest number of people displaced due to the conflict. Those people no have home. And, and by the end of 2008, and also uh, Colombia had 5.1 million, the Democratic Republic of Congo had the third largest number with 3.1 million, followed by the Somalia and the Afghanistan. War and conflict and poor poverty can exacerbate the trafficking in person, also made the migrant smuggling and irregular migrant um, increase. Many people leave their homes and countries for a range of tragic, um, compelling, and some, sometimes tragic reasons. And during this massive uh, migratory movement, some migrants and refugees are more easy to be in traffic. In these large scale movements, refugees and migrants often face dangerous journeys in which they risk a range of human violations and abuse from these traffickers, smugglers, and some even lost their lives during the journey. According to the global record on trafficking in person, 79% of all detect traffic victims are women and children. In 2040, children compare 28% of the detect victims. And 
and two countries into long time ago, we think that child figures sought to mainly involve women traveling from two countries to rich countries for sexual exploitation. Nowadays, the number of men and children victims are increased. Um, the share of victims who are trafficked for forced labor has also increased. Um, from 2012 to 2014, more than 500 different trafficking flows were detected, and countries in Western and Southern Europe detect victims of 179 different citizenship. Um, so normally, where those victims come from? The victims of human trafficking usually come from areas with limited job opportunities and economically disadvantaged areas in the world. Most of them are also vulnerable groups in society, such as children and refugees, especially in some post-war areas. Those victims of human trafficking are mainly from Southern Asia countries, some Eastern Euro European countries, and some countries in Central Africa. The East Asia trafficking flow into Western and Southern Europe largely compare victims from China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. They compare 7% of the detected victims. Um, where, where is the victim's destination? Western and Southern Europe, as well as the rich countries of the Middle East and North America, are key destination areas um, for transregional trafficking. Um, one of the reasons is that Britons desire for a better life in developed countries often make them more vulnerable to being diseased by the traffickers. Um, the most common detect form of trafficking for for sexual exploitation and for forced labors. But trafficking victims are also exploited uh, in many other ways. Victims are trafficked to be used for force or fake marriage or used as banger, beggars, uh, benefit fraud or production of uh, pornographers or, or organ removals. In Southeast Asia, this often involved um, for forced marriages. What can we do for them? In order to prevent and address trafficking in persons and smuggling of migrants, the EU has addressed the global actions to address trafficking in person and the smuggling of migrant projects. It's a four-year project from 2015 to 2019, and it's 11 million joint in, 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 inhibited by the European Union and the United Nations Office on Drunk and Crime. And this project is in place in 30 countries. Most of those countries are in Global South countries, including Brazil, uh, Colombia, Egypt, uh, Republic uh, of Laos, uh, Mali, uh, Morocco, uh, Nepal, and Pakistan, South Africa, Ukraine. Um, global actions work with those 30 countries to plan and emplacement um, strategic national culture trafficking and culture uh, smuggling efforts through a prevention, protection, prostitution, and partnership approach. In the, in the prevention work, um, they, uh, the prevention work including raising awareness among policymakers law enforcement bodies and civil social peace. We need to help make people aware of those risks by making video and radio spot, also distributing uh, written information and, and contacting actual and potential victims of trafficking, explore the common tra uh, traffickers' rules, such as international scars, and explain where those victims can seek for help. For protection, um, we need to protect the victims of human trafficking. In some countries, there, there is a lack of awareness of the fact that some, some trafficking victims are victims by not offenders. Trafficking victims are also commonly blame themselves for what has happened to them. That stops them to go to ask for help. Without identification and recognition as victims of crimes, they can unjustified suffer prosecutions because of their illegal statutes. It's important to guarantee the physical safety of victims, protect their privacy, and make it safe for them to testify against 
their abusers. Victims need to uh, assist them to extend beyond the end of their exploitations and any criminal prosecutions. Mm, the last step is prosecute the human traffickers. Successful prosecuting human traffickers depend on the police and other making the right decision. This can only happen if they have the knowledge and capacity to respond to human um, human trafficking. We need to help some country to develop effective law enforcement and criminal justice institutions. Without specialized human trafficking law, victims are subject to greater uncertainty while traffickers face reduced risk of, of penalties. Mm. So in conclusion, the EU is one of the main destinations for international migrants from global South countries. At the same time, the, the human trafficking, um, migrant smuggling, and irregular migration is also be fixed. In order to counter human trafficking and counter migrant smuggling, it's important to raise the awareness of the risk of smuggling and irregular migration, plan and emplacement of prevention, protection, and prosecution approach. Thank you.